Hey, horror fans, once again, it's the Horror Mizumani G, and yes, it's that time again. One of the fun things I always like to do when it comes to the end of the year, it's time for my top 10 best horror pictures of 2018. Ha <laughs> ha I love doing this one. Now, one of the great things I love about doing my, uh, doing, making videos for not only for my subscribers, but for myself, is making these top 10 lists. We've come to the end of the year, and it comes down to this. Uh, what are my top ten horror films of 2018? And uh, this is a little difficult this a little difficult this year because I had to wrestle with who's who's the top uh, movie of 2018 because I had to choose two and two of them I truly did love. I wrestled with it, but I finally was able to pick a number one. There were a couple other movies that were on my list that I wanted to put on here, but they were not actually horror. So because I really wanted to try to make it an all horror list, so there was a couple of movies that I did really enjoy. But unfortunately, since they were not actually horror pictures, they were more psychological thrillers. So I had to take them off my list. Uh, but uh, like I said before, this is something I truly love to do. Uh, keep in mind that this list, this is my opinion of what I believe to be the top five, top ten horror pictures of 2018. Your list might be similar, similar to mine's, might be totally different, but like I said, this is just my opinion only. Okay, let's get to it. Uh, this is going to be a couple, let's get with some honorable mentions. Uh, first of all, one honorable mention that I will have will be the Summer of 84. Uh, this was a pretty interesting film, sort of like remind you of the Goonies. You have uh, it was actually set in the '80s. You have these group of uh, teenage boys. They have fun. They go, they go around playing uh, games, and they find out that there is a kid that's missing, and they believe that one of their neighbors is actually a serial killer. So they go about doing their own investigation, which is pretty fun. And I thought all the kids, all the kid actors, did a fine job as well. The movie actually makes a very change in tone when we get to the third act and that really makes the kids in danger really enjoyed the picture but just couldn't crack my top 10. Uh, my second um, honorable mention will be the uh, sci-fi action film called Upgrade. The Upgrade was written and directed by Saul Vredden Lee Winnell. Uh, we have Logan Marshall Green. He plays a guy named Grace who refuses to upgrade himself, unfortunately, into an accident that kills his uh, girlfriend and paralyzes him, allows himself to be this stem that puts in, puts in the back of his head and allows him to walk. Uh, fortunately, he decides he wants to get revenge on the people who killed him, and uh, this, guy, this voice stem that only he hears allows him to use his body uh, as a weapon. And uh, we get, uh, I get throwbacks of the Six Million Dollar Man, and it has some great on-screen kills, some great practical effects. But again, like I said, I wanted to keep this more horror-related. And even though we had some great practical effects, and I really enjoyed the film, I just couldn't crack my top ten because it's not really horror. And so let's get on with it. With it, this is my top ten movies of twenty eight top ten horror movies of twenty eighteen. Coming in at number ten will be the Meg. Yes. <laughs> I truly love this picture. It's a nice fun popcorn picture. You have Jason Statham doing what Jason Statham does does. He plays a uh, submarine guy who goes on to rescue his ex wife and uh, his crew, and unfortunately, uh, they release a prehistoric shark, a megalodon, simply called the Meg. Uh, it also stars Lee Bingbing, and they too have great chemistry. It was a fun movie, really nice popcorn film. Yes, yeah, so coming at number 10 will be The Meg. Coming in at number 9 will be Mom and Dad. Yes, yeah, truly love this picture too. Once again, we have Nicolas Cage and Selma Blair. They play parents who are, uh, really kind of wild when they were young, and now they come in uh, this mundane lifestyle with their kids. Unfortunately, uh, some strange virus or broadcast comes into play, and uh, unfortunately, it turns their pa uh, turns all the parents who want to absolutely murder their kids. <laughs> so, uh, by the time that their children get home, we see uh, Nicholas Cage and his manic Bess and Selma Blair going out their way trying to murder their kids. We also get a special cameo from horror veteran Lance Herkinson <laughs> as well. That's a truly fun picture. Once again, Nicholas Cage at his merciless best. So coming in at number nine, Mom and Dad. 
Coming in at number eight, we have the, I think it's French film, Revenge. Now, uh, this is another rape, revenge, a uh, horror picture. Uh, we've seen these movies before, but what really stands out this one is the acting is very well done. We have the lead actress who does a very fine job. She's a bit naive at first when uh, she is a mistress of this guy who's a, a complete asshole. And uh, when one of his friends, unfortunately, uh, does the dirty deed, she thinks he's going to protect her, but all he does is just attempt to kill her. And in the next part of the movie, we see her getting her revenge. And it had some excellent practical effects. I uh, really enjoyed the cast. Everyone played their parts very well, especially the lead actress. I thought she did a uh, really did fine performance as her character makes a complete 180 turn as comes off as this naive, dumb, I guess you could say, not really smart woman. And then all of a sudden, she's become very resourceful, uh, very driven to get her revenge. Very bloody, too. I mean, you want to see some blood. Definitely, uh, this one really lets the blood out, too. So, coming at number eight is Revenge. Coming in at number seven, it's the World War II action horror film Overlord. Yes, really love this picture a lot. Uh, we have this uh, guy who's... who's uh, Comes in out of nowhere. If he, we see in the trailers, he said, I would just mow my lawn. The next thing you know, I'm uh, get drafted into World War II, about to invade uh, 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 German occupied uh, France. <laughs> uh, Russell, uh, we have uh, Kurt Russell's son, Wyatt Russell. He does a pretty good job as Ford. Uh, you can see his, you can always see him channeling his inner uh, Kurt Russell in the thing. As uh, they try to uh, raid this church, so that way the D-Day uh, invasion can come through. And at the and uh, while there, they find out that the Nazis are doing these crazy ass experiments. <laughs> uh, we get to see uh, Fitch, uh, Ian De uh, Ian DeCaster in this film as well. He plays one of the um, uh, guys in the Witchbook column, and he has a very interesting role in here as well. Uh, very good practical effects, nice action setup, you know, World War II, what you're going to, it's a nice action horror film, uh, with World War II and, and playing in the background, like I said, great performances by, uh, Javon Epito, uh, I believe he plays, uh, Bryce, you know, you got White Russell, again, nice horror film, great practical effects, you even have a nice, uh, villain in here, uh, one of the Nazis, he plays a nice villain here, so coming in at number seven is Overlord. Coming in at number six, we have Annihilation. Yes, uh, written and directed by Alice Garland. This one stars uh, Natalie Portman. Uh, she plays a uh, special. Uh, she plays a, uh, I think, a biologist. Uh, when her husband's team uh, gets lost and he's the only one that comes back, her and a group of women soldiers head into a thing called the Shimmer, some type of um, weird substance, jelly-like substance that's fucking up with the DNA. Uh, you have alligators mixed with sharks. Uh, you have this creature that's kind of like park bear that, you know, that goes through them. Uh, almost everyone in there is like their bodies all ripped off. Some great practical effects. Very nice performances there. Kind of a weird ending if you uh, saw this film. You know what I'm talking about. But I really enjoyed the film. So coming in at number six is Annihilation. Okay, coming in at number five, we have Mandy. Yes, Nicolas Cage appears on this list twice. Uh, this film, written by, uh, written and directed by uh, Pablo Cosmos, uh, Nicolas Cage plays Red. Uh, he and uh, Andrea Risenborough, who plays the title character Mandy, they're a nice, simple couple. Uh, I think they're both recovering from problems. I think he's a recovering alcoholic. She unfortunately is kept there by this crazy uh, LSD uh, hippies back in the day. Uh, led by uh, uh, actor uh, Linus Lionel Roach, who plays Jeremiah. Uh, for some reason, he's tripped out. He thinks that uh, if he she becomes one of his groups or whatever, unfortunately, she laughs at him, so they kill her. Nicholas Cage does his manic best as he goes on his revenge to kill every one of the church members. Very psychedelic, very crazy ass movie. We got some um, nice demon bikers. We have some excellent fight scenes between um, between Red and this one of the church members when they use chainsaws to fight. I thought it was very, very vibrant red and very psychedelic colors. And of course, once again, it's Nicolas Cage at his cinematic best. So coming in at number five is Mandy.
Okay, coming at number four, we have The Strangers Pray at Night. Yes, the sequel to The Strangers. Uh, we have Christina Hendricks uh, and uh, Martin Henderson. Uh, they play Cindy and Mike along with their kids. They're going on a trip. Well, actually, they're taking uh, Kinsey to boarding school because uh, she's a uh, you know, typical rebellious teenager. Unfortunately, when they get to the park that their uh, uncle and aunt are supposed to be proprietors there, they find out that they have been killed by the strangers, yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, they have to run to their lives. Now, what makes this interesting and more effective horror film is the fact that now, instead of the one location house that he used in the original film, we all have a huge park, which I thought the setting was great. We have some great on-screen kills, uh, some great uh, scare, uh, jump scares that we have. I thought, um, what's her name? Bailey Hansen and Louis Pullman were great as uh, brother and sister, Kenzie and Luke. And uh, obviously, when we get to some colors, we have some vibrant colors in the pool scene. I thought that was great. Uh, very well-paced movies. We had some callbacks to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre towards the end of the film. A uh, very good film. Very, very uh, a pleased sequel. So coming in at number four is The Strangers Party at Night. Coming in at number three, yes, it's Halloween 2018. Yes. <laughs> um... Uh, David Howard Green uh, really did a great job, but I uh, have to give uh, give credit to uh, Danny Green. Uh, he did a very fine job in writing this picture, and of course we have the return of Jamie Lee Curtis. This film is a direct sequel to the original Halloween. It ignores all of the other sequels that we've had in this place. Kind of makes up for the Thorn trilogy and that god awful resurrection movie. <laughs> yeah. uh, this time we have uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. She, Laurie Strode is back once again. She's kind of isolated herself, she's an alcoholic. Uh, she's definitely been waiting to prepare for uh, Michael Myers to return. And we do get a nice uh, kind of throwback to the original film. I thought uh, the guy that played Michael, James uh, Judd Courtney, he did a great job portraying the, the shape. Nick Castle, once again, he plays uh, Michael Myers in the beginning of the film. Very nice, uh, well-paced. Obviously, this film does has its flaws. Uh, let's see, the supposedly, I guess, Dr. Santon. Oh, boy, was he terrible in this film. But the movie was good enough for me to have it placed as a number three on my list. Now, it took me a long time to figure out how I was going to place these two movies on my list because it was a huge fight because I love both movies to death. They are excellent horror pictures. Is what we are, myself, is the reason why I love horror because both films are at the pinnacle of what you want in a good horror picture. But who can I pick to be number two? And who can I pick to be number one? Well, after fighting and fighting and fighting, I finally decided to put these two where they are. So coming in at number two, which more likely you believe, but know why my number one movie will be. So coming on number two will be A Quiet Place. Yes, John Kaczynski's very well directed, very well acted horror film. Um, the premise is excellent. I mean, how can you actually go without the entire film without making a sound? I mean, first of all, actually, the important premise is great when you find out that aliens have landed and you can't say shit. You can't even make a sound. A uh, 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 whistle will cause these creatures to come up. I even like how they even began the film when you have a tragedy that comes or early should tell you the true dangers that you are in this particular world. And, of course, like I said, John Kaczynski and his wife, Emily Blunt, are great as a couple. We actually have a true deaf child uh, that plays her um, oldest daughter. Now, of course, she has some issues because, you know, they she thinks that the family might blame her for what happened to your son. And the entire setup is excellent. I love the design of the alien creatures that we see later on in the film. A lot of people didn't uh, thought they might have been a little overdone. But I'm very happy to say that uh, A Quiet Place goes into my number two slot. I'm pretty sure you guys know what my number one movie is. <laughs> so, of course, my number one movie for uh, 2018 will be Hereditary. I mean, there's no ifs or ands about it. Uh, directed by Ari Aster, starring Tony Collette, Mila Shippel, and, Br and Brian Gay <laughs> Gary Brielle. I'll get it right. 
Gabriel Byrne, uh, this movie stars about a family who's at odds to themselves. They're not happy. They don't like each other. You have this weird daughter that clicks a lot like that. Oh, boy. <laughs> that, that, that clock is out. Don't get to my nerves. <laughs> obviously, when her mother dies, she didn't have a great relationship to begin with. And obviously, Secrets comes out. This whole movie is just, I mean, even now, it's like, if I were to watch it again, I'd probably still be like, holy shit. What the hell did I just see? <laughs> uh, Tony Collette was excellent. I mean, if she doesn't get an Oscar nomination, I don't expect her to win, but she doesn't get a, 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 at least an Oscar nomination off her performance. Something is very wrong with the Academy. Uh, you got some good practical effects. The ending was just way out there. No one suspected that out, out, out of this ending, but the entire movie is great. Uh, a lot of people, uh, like I said before, when I reviewed this film, like I tell people before, this film probably will not be for you because it's kind of a slow-paced burn. Uh, there are some aspects of the film you might not like about it, you might not enjoy, but to me, that's what true horror is. It's like, you can have a great horror picture similar to what you have in A Quiet Place, or you can have something like Hereditary. It gives you both ends of the spectrum when people who enjoy horror. But like I said, but a Hereditary does go places uh, that you might not want to, that some people might not uh, want to deal with. And it did, because it does speak about a mental illness, because everyone thought her mother was crazy. Uh, but once we learn the truth, we understand why. <laughs> so my number one film of 2018 is Hereditary. So there you have it, my horror fans. Those are my top 10 horror pictures of 2018. Do you agree with my list? What do you think? is your top 10 horror pictures of 2018. Leave your comments down in your comment section below and tell me what do you think, uh, what do you believe, or do you agree with my list of the top 10 horror pictures of 2018. But once again, that's my video for today, guys. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up because it does help the channel a lot. And once again, if this is your first time here, please hit the subscriber button and ring that notification bell. That way you can come and enjoy the horror experience with me, the horror, my Zamani G. And as always, all my social media links will be down in the description box below as well. Uh, stay tuned. I will have my top five worst horror pictures of 2018 coming up soon. Once again, my name is Lamont Smith, better known as the Horror Miser Mani G. And always remember, horror rules. <laughs> See you guys later. I'm out. <laughs>